looking back on my channel, do I have any regrets? Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and I'm actually out this week on vacation, so I've pre-banked a bunch of videos. This is one of those videos. Uh, you may see Steph, the alternate, or Lewis from Nerd Report, so show them some love. If you see them breaking some news, they're helping me out. So grateful to them. Uh, but guys, this was a topic I wanted to do because uh, it's the two-year anniversary of me posting content like this with this background behind me. Uh, in fact, here it is. Look, you can see me, Adon, Damien. I got to get uh, Ronan Starlord. He's a good dude. I haven't got, had him back, but you got to get you back, dude. Uh, but here was the first time I made a video like this in my garage behind a set like this. It's been now two years since I've been doing this pretty much full time. Uh, and I wanted to look back on sort of uh, my life as a YouTuber and how I got to a point. And am I happy where I'm at? Do I have any regrets, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in order to do that, I want to go back real quick to sort of the where it all began. Guys, this channel started 12 years ago where I did sketches, more comedy stuff, uh, bikini videos, etc. I've actually scaled down the bikini videos because YouTube loved them then, but they don't love them now. Uh, but I kept this one beer goggles because it's my 10 million views. It still makes me money. Uh, and I'm proud of it. It was a commercial spot I did that did really well. It got me a lot of work afterwards back in 2008. Um, and then Twilight for Guys, I'm really proud of too. 1.4 million. I did the censored version. Uh, but this was the video that actually got me hired at break.com, which owned screenjunkies.com at the time and got me to do all that amazing work. Um, there was some other uh, bikini content there that I have finally pulled because I didn't want YouTube promoting those as the most related videos and that being sort of the video you see as the first video of my channel. So I have scaled some of that down finally because I have so much more content now. But uh, after I worked for Screen Junkies and everything else, I got canceled in October of 2017. Um, did some things I wasn't proud of, but definitely didn't do a lot of the things that everyone was accusing me of. And so it took a year before I finally had the nerve to come back on YouTube. I think I'd come out a few months earlier on Twitter with a statement saying I didn't do a lot of things people thought I did, but nobody believed me. And so I came back and made this uh, first video, which was uh, me in, th in a theater. Wait, with, I just... It was like I was interviewing people in the theater. There I am. Real people from the audiences. That's right. I really liked this idea. It was, it was the irony here was stupid of me interviewing the Predator uh, because everyone was jumping on me, calling me one of those. <laughs> uh, but uh, the timing just was what it was, and I wanted to, to, to be back out there. And I, I really like this format. So I did this real people, real reviews, or I was in movie theaters interviewing people after they came out and then having a discussion in the theater. It was a lot of fun, and I actually wouldn't mind bringing it back. But I did that, and I did Nerd Wars, where we were out and I like, got a bar and like doing uh, debates like uh, uh, Nerd Wars about topics. And uh, I tried my best to make this content. I did edited content. I loved the stupid Easter eggs. I was proud of this. But as you see here, nobody liked this content. 33, 38, 37, 35, 30% 30 all downvoted. Uh, all of it was terrible because everyone still hated me. They all thought I was something I wasn't because everyone just believed what they heard. Uh, but I kept going. I, I refused to let that stop me. Um, I kept going. I made. I really was proud of this one. I would love to make more content like this. I, guys, watch this one. Would Robin Williams have played a genie in live action Aladdin? It's like a 26 minute theory video where I really scripted and edited it down. Found some amazing clips. It was like a little mini documentary. It just took so long to make, and I I can't. I didn't have time to keep making it. Thankfully, it did get some more views over time. But uh, that's the kind of type of content I'd love to make more of, especially over a movie world. But anyway, I, I tried to like take experiments, see if anything would work, and uh, nothing really clicked. Nothing clicked. Kept going, kept going. And then finally I did that video here, which I showed you of me in the in the garage here. I started doing more live reactions, hoping that might change things. Kept going, kept going. I love my show video evidence. In fact, I want to bring that back. That was another great concept I think would have worked had people not hated my guts. Uh, but then it was July, I think, 22nd, uh, two years ago, when uh, I finally was able to drop my receipts video. Now, this clearly changed things. And I knew this was going to change things. I knew this video was going to get me eyeballs. Now, it didn't get as many eyeballs as I had hoped, to be, I'll be honest. Um, the Screen Junkies update that called me out has, I think, double that. So that really frustrated me. It still frustrates me, I'll be honest. But um, I knew I, I needed to get that out there. But if I have any maybe creative regret, it's that I didn't prepare better to have a better follow-up show or plan for the channel after I dropped that video. But I had to drop that video pretty quickly because I had a settlement and I want to react as soon as that happened. And so I had to rush that out pretty fast. 
And I really just decided to run with it and just sort of go with the flow as a, as that happened. And sure enough, that did well. And then I did a follow-up update that week, thanking everybody and showing how Facebook deleted the video. Uh, and then uh, I did a live stream, which actually did well. And then I had um, uh, this other video where I sort of called out Film Twitter for ignoring it. And I took a shot, sort of, at John Campia. And that was sort of the first time where some of the supporters of mine sort of started turning their backs, saying, ah, Andy, whatever, get out of here. I decided, I think at that point is when I sort of clearly focused on some drama, but you got to remember, I was still really angry, still really deep into it. Now, looking at the call out to John Campia, do I regret it? No, <laughs> not at all. In fact, if you watch that video again, I feel like I'm very fair. Uh, in fact, I just don't know why John did just apologize or reach out personally to sort it out. It's so silly. And instead, it created a sort of a dumb nothing beef back and forth. But at the end of the day, John... I said it then, I'll say it one more time. John, you said you said no comment, but you did. You made a comment, and I didn't like your comments at all. I remember them very clearly. Just because you didn't say it on YouTube and you said it to thousands of fans on online elsewhere doesn't mean you said no comment. Uh, he tried to argue the semantics. If I said it on YouTube, guys, it, 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 I didn't like it. I didn't like what he said, and he clearly didn't like it either because he deleted it. But that was my issue. And I called it out and I showed out the hypocrisy of him doing it. And then he's like, well, those are all popular people. You're, you, you know, Hollywood figures I was talking about. Well, I, there were YouTubers you talked about too. I found those later. Whatever. We are, I, I stand by what I said. I, he should have been man enough to just reach out or apologize. He didn't either. I've apologized to him. I've moved on. I've stopped making videos. But there was a little bit of a tiff back and forth. There was a tiff between me and Grace Randolph at a few times because I didn't like how disingenuous and dishonest she was being. Um, so I called some of those out. In both of those situations, Grace and John were related channels that YouTube was telling me to program like. And so, yeah, I was trying to ride their algorithms a bit too, for sure. But I believed everything, stood by everything I was saying. Um, but that's the reality there. When, I, when, you, when people sort of labeled me the drama channel um, because of those two videos, those two topics, like it's just, they, they weren't watching the channel because the only other thing I did that sort of got me attention was this Thor was only one gender. Uh, changed my mind, Nerd Edition, which was sort of spinning what uh, Crowder did to conventions. And uh, I believe this. I thought this was a really good conversation and a good video, but people immediately, because, because of this, because of some other stuff, and because I was promoted by a bunch of right-leaning channels, uh, people wrote me off. They thought I was disingenuous. They thought I was a jerk. They thought I was all the things that they think <laughs> the right are. Uh, and so between that and then the Campia video and a, couple, and a Grace video, people just defined me as something I wasn't. Now, that's another topic I want to jump in quickly because when I came back, there were two big channels that definitely promoted me, and I want to thank them again. A lot of people dunk on these two channels, but there's a reason why I don't dunk on these channels. Uh, Jeremy from The Quartering did a huge video that got me a ton of attention. He brought in a huge amount of subscribers. He even said, go subscribe to Andy's new channel. I was very grateful to him for doing that. He had a very fair take on it all, and he helped bring in a lot of people who knew of me and finally found me and wanted to support me. So Jeremy from The Quartering, thank you. Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers also did that. I got to thank him. I still respect, I respect both these Jeremys tremendously. Jeremy from, the, uh, from Geeks and Gamers did a whole interview with me for like three uh, episodes, and uh, I was really grateful for it. I loved our conversation. I would have loved to have continued having conversations. Uh, but I don't know where that one went south. Something went south with Jeremy and I. I've lost track. I mean, I'm just not remembering. But I just want to sort it out. I, I, have, I have no beef with him. I don't know why there still is. But there seemingly is. They don't like me. Um, I'd love to sort that out someday. So the door is always open. I, look, I have no issue with Jeremy from Geeks Gamers. I know a lot of people want to dunk on both of them and don't like a lot of their coverage. And to be fair, I don't agree with everything they post by any stretch of the imagination. But I respect them as content creators. I don't think, I don't believe in censoring somebody just because we have different political beliefs. I, I, that's, you, you just can't do that. Um, so I respect the, you know, brands they've built. I don't always agree with them. But I love that we can have, you know, genuine conversations. Uh, so, I, look, I got no issues with either of them. And I'm very grateful for them bringing in a lot of support over there to me and in this new channel. Now, that came with a whole other challenge, which was I had this audience from The Quartering, from Geeks and Gamers, that sort of expected, I think, similar content in a way. And, you know, they didn't like some of the stuff I had or some of the takes I had. And so I had to deal with that. And that was something I navigated. I still don't regret any of those steps along the way. As, I, as I'm scrolling through here, you know, it was the cancel, Dave Chappelle and cancel culture was another big video that popped for me. Um, but that's my take on pro Jared. I didn't even know who pro Jared was, but I read about him and I learned about it and I, I wanted to offer my take because so many people were asking me. Um, 
But, uh, you know, more often than not, I was talking about movie stuff. And uh, Hollywood hypocrisy. Once in a while, I'd drop in something that was sort of more tailored for what I thought maybe the quartering audience would like, but also something that I believed in. And that's sort of how I built out sort of what I was doing. And, and that's when I took those shots, offended by Chappelle, you're missing the, import, the point, uh, that's when things, you know, worked. It didn't always. Uh, who cares if they make a female James Bond? Um, you know, it d- didn't do that well. Uh, but Pamela Anderson versus Meghan McCain, that did well. It, it was a very weird crapshoot. Um, people think The Office is too offensive. I remember this video bombed, and now it's picked up more views over time. So it's such a crapshoot on YouTube. But... I would react to whatever was was working quickly. Videos on cancel culture always did well for me because that was the one topic I feel like we all agreed on. We were anti-cancel culture, but I didn't want it to become an anti-cancel culture channel. That was what I was doing over at Hugging the Cactus. Um, but I, as you'll see here, like 25 facts on 25 Years Later of Shawshank, my favorite movie, 2,000 views. No one gave a shit. No one cared about this stuff. Um, when I talked movies, when I talked, you know, uh, Hot Ones, Beef with Kevin Smith, 82,000 views. Um, the Irish is it too good for Netflix? One thousand. Matt Damon lost millions passing an Avatar. One thousand. I mean, that was what I was struggling with. So I, I was trying to ride the algorithm for sure. Do I have regrets in sort of doing that? No, I don't have regrets. Do I wish I could have known how the algorithm would have worked better? Sure, but I think I've I've only learned through all the tons of content i've posted which again <laughs> looking at it it's all movie content there's so much movie debate and content and you know once in a while obama, obama slams woke cancel culture Th- there really wasn't a lot of drama there's no grace or john or any stuff in here that everyone thinks i did nonstop. um in fact as i'm trying to find it like where here's stuff i edited i was trying to do edited comedy videos and they bombed i brought back nerd wars but brought in good guests it just bombed I couldn't get the algorithm to, to work on the things I, I really liked and wanted to do more of. And instead, the drama was all that worked. And then sometimes if it was topical. My, my review of Star Wars Rise of Skywalker did really well for me. Um, Bill and Ted first look. I, I just rode that wave, even though it was just photos. Um, but uh, they were the first photos we saw. It wasn't a lie. Uh, but, you know, this idea that I'm clickbaiting drama, I, I don't see it. Uh, John Campia, I joined in the scan and I gave him pro videos when Collider shut down because I had a lot of insight in this and I love giving business insight. So look, I, and I, I did a few of those videos because it worked and they got me a lot of, they paid the bills that month and I was like, cool, I'm going to, I'm going to do this and I want to talk about this. But as I go through it, I realize, you know, the lesson is don't listen to what people are telling you you're doing because they have no idea. They just hate on you. <laughs> it's definitely, a t- it took me a while to realize that because at times it would bug me hearing sort of the critics, the criticism. And uh, the reality check is it's just not accurate at all. They're just not fans. They just want to hate. And so I, I, uh, I don't regret anything I've done. I think everything, I, while I would have loved to have performed differently, uh, I think everything I did got me to the point where I'm at today, which is more focused, stronger, more passionate, less afraid. And those are the things I really wanted to be focused on. Um, now, I'm trying to find the Screen Junkie stuff. Here we go. Truth bombs on Screen Junkies, uh, naming names for the fundraiser month. Start the start of sort of talk, Dan Merle leaving Screen Junkies. That was a pro Dan Merle video for the record. Um, but that, you know, William Sadler interview, that was an f- awesome interview. Um, my scoop on Batman, what it's about. Michael Jackson almost bought Marvel. Secrets of Infinity War are revealed. Uh, it, 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 there's not a lot of drama here. Um, Snyder Cut, Ray Fisher stuff, uh, that stuff started to get, you know, attention. And I, I believed in it. Um, and so uh, that got me a lot of people didn't like me, but I didn't care. I didn't care because I believed in what I was saying. Uh, there's a couple uh, John Campia videos because it came up on a stream with Jody, and I knew they would get views, and they did. So those are just some view getters. Uh, a two out of hundreds we've looked at of, okay, maybe that was you know a little bit of drama. Fine. It's everything else, not. There was a lot of Snyder stuff. Enough is enough. Not another Campia video. They hated that I did it, but this was the last video I did on John Campia where I was like, I don't want to keep talking about John Campia. We're done. Uh, the note was clear. Um, but then again, movies, 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 all this stuff. Um, and then uh, I'm, I'm looking for the big, the the drama stream I did on Screen Junkies, which, my God, where was it? <laughs> it was, I've made a lot of freaking content that wasn't drama is the lesson here. Uh, where the hell is it? It's got to be here. No. Oh, okay, here we go. Eight months ago. That's right. It was October yeah, it was last the anniver- three-year anniversary of when all that went down. Um, do I regret doing this? Hell no. 
<laughs> Hell no. In fact, I'm so glad I did that. It finally freed me. Finally let me go because I'd been holding that stuff in for so long. And I'd been waiting for them to say something to clear up their lies. Guys, you got to remember, like, I, look, I, I, I hate, I hate anybody who shares personal information. But I hate people who do that unprovoked. Like, Dan Merle and that crow, crew endorsed absolute lies about me, labeled me terrible things to millions of people on the channel I built. And I had to hold that in for three years. So yeah, I made a stream where I called it all out and I called them all hypocrites. I did do that. Um, I called out Dan's girlfriend, which I'm sure pissed him off. I know it pissed him off. But the reality was Dan's girlfriend was a public figure at that point on the Schmodown doing interviews with Christian, etc. Fair game in my mind. And his relationship to her was incredibly relevant as to why the situation was more complicated than people wanted to, re re to realize. Um, and I didn't drop a bunch of receipts that I could have and DMs and things. I didn't do a bunch of that because I didn't think that was uh, right. I, I didn't want to do that, but I wanted to make it clear that, guys, this was more complicated than you realize. I was hurt too, and I had reason to be. Sure, he was hurt and he had reason to be, but he expressed that. I didn't. I didn't get to express mine. And uh, I felt it was very important to put out there. And I thought it was very relevant for fans to know that Dan's girlfriend was a fan, a super fan, who I connected him with. And she had no issue with me in my interactions with her, which were the same as every other fan that complained about me, and uh, had no problem with it. Until later. I, I found uh, there's there so much relevancy there that to me, I'm sorry, that was a hip hypocritical. Now, I understand why he's mad that I revealed that. <laughs> I get it. But uh, I think he's, 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 he's just being too stubborn to see, to step back from it all. Like, I understand why he's upset. You know, I can, I can understand it. I don't, I'll never fully understand. But I, you know what I mean? I, I can get, I understand I betrayed them. To, I, I understand I, I disappointed them. But uh, after all we built together, it, it's, 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 it still hits a little bit. I, now that I talk about it, I really don't talk about this. I'm doing this because I'm going through and I'm, it's like memory lane. This is your life. Uh, look, here's what I'll say on that topic. Dan Merle, the door is always open. I know for a fact that fans would kill to see us do something again. Just something. What we built on Screen Junkies, the version I was in, it was really loved. And I did crush it. But we never got to really address it with them. You guys said you would. And then I came back with new information. And then you were turned away and you ran away. And I think a lot of fans are sad that, that happened. We never got to try to hash it out or at least agree to disagree or just put it all out there. I think we would both learn so much and I think we owe the fans to do it. So look, my door, guys, just so you know my state, I'm not going to keep talking about this. I really don't want to keep talking about this, but I'm not afraid to talk about it if someone asks. But uh, my point is the door's always open for me on any of those guys, any of them, uh, even Roxy, who I really don't like because she lied. Door's always open to try and solve the problem or at least have a conversation to see if it can be solved. Privately first, Always. So uh, just know it's not my door that's shut. So do I regret saying these things? Hell no. It, it made me, honestly, I think I was struggling trying to figure out what I was, whether I was upset. All of that felt better when I, after that stream, I let it out. And I can tell you now almost a year later, I'm so glad I did that stream because I think it helped me. It made me move on. Um, so as I look through the, the channel, I did some stuff about the truth behind what went wrong with Screenings Plus. That was not drama. That was actually really interesting insight. You guys should check it out. Really proud of that one. I didn't hate on anybody. I got an, even the one I did about Nick Mundy. Just people wanted to know. And I was very pro Nick, but I just explained sort of what, what happened behind the scenes a little bit. Nothing too personal. Uh, and uh, I, I feel like fa I owed fans the information because they wanted to know. Um, and the whole they said what, whatever. I, I, I mix it with celebrities and popular influencers. I think that's a funny bit. In fact, I think I need to bring that back. I like that segment. Uh, oh, I, look, my kids reviewing Christmas. Like, I, there's so much content here, and the majority of it isn't drama stuff or clickbait stuff. So that's the truth, right? And that, that's what makes me happy, and I go back. Do I love every video I've posted? No. Is there some filler in here? I'm sure, sure. But, uh, you know, me calling out Grace Randolph to sort of point out that she's incorrect on this and she's spouting lies, uh, I thought that was important. I don't think that's drama. That's correcting the story. Um, and Johnny Depp stuff? Thank God for them and that fan base. I'm so grateful to you guys. So happy to have found a topic like that that I'm passionate about and an audience that cares about that. Uh, the Free Britney ones I'm, I'm getting into now just because, man, I, I, I want to try and report on that too. That, that new 
piece that Ronan Farrow wrote about it. Holy moly, that just made me so emotional. But that's the kind of stuff that really does affect me that I feel like is where the algorithm works. I'm passionate, it's topical, there's an audience behind it, and I can offer real insight. That's what I want to do, and I wish I could do that again towards movies. That's my ultimate goal. But, uh, and I look back on all of this, man, do I have regrets? No, I mean, are there things I could have done differently? Sure, that I could have done better? Sure, but overall, I think all of it was a lesson to learn how to be better at making content and finding my audience and being real with you guys. So uh, looking back on this, it's just trippy, man, watching some of this stuff. But I'm really grateful for all of you guys, man. You, I, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing now without you guys. And, and, I, and, I, and that right now, I'm able to do it as my job currently. Uh, I'm trying my best. So I, I can't continue to do that without your support. So if you want to help and you, wanna, and you like where this channel has been going, please consider hitting that join button. Uh, it helps a bunch. Or if you can't afford that, at least hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for all alerts. Smash that like button as well and leave a comment down below uh, on your thoughts. What, what is your favorite phase of the past few years of Popcorn Planet? Did you even watch the early stuff? Anybody but Bunda? Did you guys watch that? Because I know Bunda did. Love you, Bunda. Uh, but what do you guys think of all this? Do you have any questions for me? Ask me down below. Hit me up on uh, social media at any time. Look, final thought. I could have done things better, I'm sure. But you can't live with regrets. You can't live in the what if. I did for a little while there. There was a lot of like, man, Screen Junkies really screwed me. <laughs> they took my show. Like, that's a show I built. Like, if I if I allow myself to go down that hole too long, it gets dark, guys. Because yeah, it pisses me off. I, I could have lived on forever just on that show on alone, and that was my idea. It really was my idea, and I I gave Brett that co-creator credit because he really did help form that show to where it was but the show was my idea it really was uh it's not a lie but i wanted to share that with brett because i feel like he was a really integral part but what's so funny now is screen junkies rewrites the history is oh it's brett's show brett was there for like the first 20 <laughs> and uh he was instrumental and i gave him the credit but i taught spencer how to do it i dan all, they, all of them they all learned it watched it with me dan wasn't editing that right away uh and he wasn't writing them right away and he became a part of that team. Dan was, was equally a part of that team. And I'd argue Dan was more instrumental than Brett over the years. And then Spencer, obviously, as well. So the, the point of the matter is, though, yeah, it pisses me off that they're all getting paid on that content. And, and there are contra – you know, I do sometimes get sp spiral into conspiracy theories of – <laughs> I could go down there, but you can't is the point. So it's not that it's not there. Of course I get frustrated some days. I, I, I always will. But it's about containing it and moving on and having a, the, a healthier headspace in place to not let yourself go down that spiral because it's not good for you. It's not. Um, and I don't go down those spirals until I go back and look back. And then sometimes you look, you're like, oh, man, that. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I remember that. I remember, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, look, it's important to go back and remember where you came from. It's important to remember those things. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's time to move forward. It's time to keep going, like I like to say. Thank all of you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more this week and ongoing here on Popcorn Planet. <laughs>